And this is not just about what is happening in Ukraine, as we are seeing shockwaves around the world. The dramatic acceleration of the increase of the prices for food and energy that was already taking place uh, in the last year are causing enormous suffering to hundreds of millions of the most vulnerable people worldwide. And this caps on top of the shock of the continued COVID-19 pandemic and the uneven access to resources for recovery that particularly penalize developing countries around the world. And abiding by the UN Charter and by international law, recognizing full equality among states, they hopefully will be an instrument that will allow us once again to come together as humankind and address the dramatic challenges we face from climate change to epidemics and to many others, and in which the only war we should have would be a war of those that put the, the planet at risk. Well, the UN Secretariat uh, has not uh, the power to do investigations of that kind. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, the International Criminal Court. Uh, we have uh, uh, the different mechanisms that uh, exist uh, in the uh, human rights uh, system, namely commissions of inquiry. Uh, it is not my intention to promote an investigation myself. I have not the authority for it. But I think it's very important to have independent investigations in order to have full credibility and full accountability. It uh, entirely respects and abides by all resolutions of the General Assembly and of the Security Council. And today, if I regret something, is that uh, the UN was not allowed to be part of the uh, Normandy format to follow the Minsk Agreement and to be able to form a very clear cut opinion about the failure of the Minsk Agreement. I understand that the Russian Federation has uh, many grievances, but the UN Charter foresees a large number of mechanisms in which grievances can be addressed and namely with the, the recourse to uh, the International Court of Justice or other, other mechanisms if all the other uh, ones foreseen in the Charter fail. But there is one thing that is true and obvious and that no arguments can change. We have not Ukrainian troops in the territory of the Russian Federation but we have Russian troops in the territory of the Ukrainian Federation. In the absence of cash, in the absence of liquidity in the economy in Afghanistan, the collapse of the economy can have devastating consequences for the people of Afghanistan. So we have been uh, uh, claiming uh, that the international community needs to create the conditions for cash to be injected in the Afghan economy. We have done it ourselves. The UN is bringing by plane banknotes to Afghanistan. We already did about 500 million US dollars. We have been pushing the World Bank uh, in order for the World Bank uh, to uh, um, uh, disburse uh, uh, amounts that are foreseen in relation to um, uh, Afghanistan. And uh, uh, we are working together with the Central Bank and the American Treasury to remove the obstacles that uh, still exist in relation to the need to unfreeze the uh, uh, money that is available. And we hope that this will be true for all the countries uh, that have these uh, uh, assets uh, frozen. Good man, uh... Thank you very much. Good uh, uh, afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.